Hello. Welcome to OJ Studios. Please enjoy today's short story, Gracie. By Olivia Julius. I sat in the middle of both mom and dad. We sat in Mr. Trinden's small office. My parents and I were on one side of Mr. Trinden's desk, and Mr. Trinden and his wife Nicole were sitting on the other side. My dad was not happy, I honestly have never seen him this mad before. My mom just remained quiet. So, what are you going to do about Adam? My dad asked. Mr. Trinden cleared his throat his expression serious as he addressed my dad's question. First and foremost, I want to assure you that we take this matter very seriously. What Adam did was completely unacceptable, and he will face appropriate consequences. My dad nodded, though his expression remained stern. And what exactly do you plan to do about it? Because from what you told me this isn't the first time, he has picked on a girl just because they are girls and now, he's cutting hair in the middle of class. Mr. Trinan glanced at me briefly before turning back to my parents. I've spoken with Gracie about this, and we believe it's important for her to have a say in how Adam is punished. After all, she's the one who was wronged here. My dad nodded, seeming satisfied with Mr. Trinan's response. That sounds reasonable. Gracie, what do you suggest? I took a deep breath, gathering my thoughts before responding. I... I think that's fair, I said my voice wavering slightly. Hearing Mr. Trinan tell us that this isn't the first time Adam has been caught picking on a girl just because we are girls made me wonder what was so bad about me being a girl for? I think if Adam wants to pick on girls, then he can be a girl. I said folding my arms. My dad's eyebrows shot up in surprise at my suggestion, while my mom looked at me with a mixture of concern and pride. Mr. Trinan and his wife exchanged a glance before Mr. Trinan spoke up again. That's certainly an interesting proposal, Gracie, he said slowly, choosing his words carefully. But I want to make sure we handle this situation appropriately. Turning Adam into a girl as a punishment might not be the most effective approach. It will just be for this weekend, Friday through Monday. Four days of nothing but using female pronouns on her, making her wear girls clothes, do girly things. Things that will make him understand. I said. He won't be at school he will just be at home. Actually, we're going to my sister-in-law's place in Missouri this weekend. Mr. Trenton said. Even better. I said smiling. He'll be away from Indianapolis, and he can be the new girl there. Mr. Trenton's wife, Nicole, spoke up, her voice gentle yet firm. Gracie, while your suggestion is creative, I worry that it might not address the root cause of Adam's behavior. Punishments should aim to teach and correct, not just retaliate. It's not retaliation. My dad said, it's a teaching moment for your son. Basically, it's a walk in another person's shoes. In this case, a walk in a girl's shoe. I looked over at dad and smiled, at least he was on my side. Mrs. Thomas what do you think should be done? Dad asked. Mom looked at me and then at Mr. Trenton. You asked her to pick out your son's punishment. I personally believe it's a great idea. I will teach your son. I'm not. Mr. Trinan began to say but dad interrupted him. Look we are new here and we don't want to start trouble, we can help you do this. Gracie has been through an embarrassing event, and your son should do the same. Mr. Trinan sighed, his expression conflicted as he considered my dad's words. I understand your perspective, Mr. Thompson, he said slowly. And I agree that Adam needs to learn from his actions. But turning him into a girl is a punishment. It's unorthodox, to say the least. My dad leaned forward, his tone firm. Sometimes, unorthodox measures are necessary to make someone understand the gravity of their actions. If Adam is forced to experience what it's like to be in someone else's shoes, perhaps he'll think twice before acting so recklessly in the future. 
Mr. Trinan was about to say something else but then he was stopped by his wife. I think it's a great idea! Nicole said, putting a hand on Mr. Trinan's arm. Mr. Trinan looked at his wife in surprise, clearly, he wasn't expecting his own wife to also agree with turning his son into a girl. And what happens if you don't think that he's learned his lesson? Mr. Trenton asked. Then he can wear the girls' school uniform for the rest of the year. I said I kind out silently laughed to myself, the thought of a boy wearing a girl's uniform was funny. But the thought of Adam in a girl's uniform was hilarious. Fine. Mr. Trenton said. But you must be objective when you determine whether he has learned his lesson or not. I promise. I said I was not too sure if I was lying or not. With the agreement settled, Mr. Trinan nodded, his expression still uncertain but resigned. Alright, it's settled then. Adam will experience life as a girl for the weekend. We got up from our seats and I thought that this was over, but Dad stopped us before we could leave. There is one more matter. Dad said wrapping his arm around my shoulder. Gracie's hair? Nicole asked. Don't worry hun I have my own salon, I can get the hair fixed for you, then after that we can do a little bit of shopping for a girl? I smiled at the idea of shopping for what Adam would have to wear, oh, and have you picked out a new name for Adam too? I mean we can't just call him Adam this weekend. I thought for a moment and then smiled. For a girly punishment like this, a girly name was in fact needed. Amanda! I said with a smile as we left Mr. Trenton's office we'll call her Amanda. A few hours later, Nicole spun me around in the salon chair and I came face to face with my new haircut for the first time. I touched the strands of blonde hair that fell around my face. I couldn't help but wonder what Jessica would have thought. She had seemed so happy that I was willing to donate my hair, and I was so close to being able to donate it. Would she be mad at me? Disappointed? Maybe if I had told the class on my first day of school, why I was growing out my hair or even told them about Jessica, maybe none of this would have happened. I know sweetie. Mom said she hugged me around my shoulder and looked at me through the large mirror. Your hair looks great, Gracie, Mom said, offering a reassuring smile. And Jessica would have been so proud of you, no matter what. I nodded, feeling a small sense of comfort in Mom's words. Thanks, Mom, I replied softly, grateful for her support. Nicole stepped back, her eyes scanning the new hairstyle with a critical eye. I think we've done a wonderful job, she said with a smile. Now, let's move on to the next step. We left the salon and headed for the Walmart that was just down the road. The prospect of shopping for girls clothes for a boy was both exciting yet kind of scary. I have never been much of a fashionista, that that was always Jessica's thing. But the idea of Adam having to wear these clothes as a punishment filled me with a sense of satisfaction. I walked down the aisles of the girls section and looked around at all the pastel color dresses and skirts, jeans, and girly t-shirts. As I perused the aisles of the girls section, I couldn't help but feel a mix of emotions swirling inside me. The vibrant colors and frilly dresses stood in stark contrast to the somber mood that had hung over me since Adam's cruel act. But amidst the uncertainty and sadness, there was also a glimmer of satisfaction, knowing that Adam would soon have to don these clothes as part of his punishment. Nicole guided me through the racks, her expertise evident as she selected various items for Amanda. Each piece was carefully chosen to fit the persona we were crafting for Adam, a girl forced to experience life from a different perspective. I ran my fingers over the soft fabrics, imagining how Adam would look in each outfit that I made up in my mind. It was strange to think of him wearing these clothes, to imagine him stepping outside wearing a dress, or a skirt, I know it is only for a weekend, but a portion of me wondered what would happen if Adam didn't learn his lesson? Would he really be stuck wearing a girl's uniform like I suggested? The thought brought a sense of justice, a feeling that he would finally understand the pain he had caused me. As I reached for a flowy skirt and matching top, I couldn't help but smile. This wasn't just about punishment, it was about empowerment. For once, I held the power, shaping Adam's fate with each item I selected. I grabbed a pack of white socks that had laced around the ankle and threw them into the cart while Nicole grabbed a set of girls underwear from the shelf. You should make him wear that pink pair first! I said pointing to the pink pair of panties that was in the box. 
Nicole looked at the box and then at me. I think that's a great idea! She said before putting it in the cart. It's kind of weird to think that since Adam is a boy, he will be wearing all these types of girls clothes for the first time. I mean wearing one of these dresses wouldn't be that big of a deal for me, but for Adam this will be his first time, and I wondered what it was going to be like for him. As we made our way to the checkout counter, our cart overflowing with girly treasures, I couldn't help but feel a sense of anticipation building within me. This weekend was going to be unlike any other, a chance for Adam to experience life from a different perspective, to walk in someone else's shoes, even if only for a few days. As we made our way to the checkout, bags filled with clothes for Amanda in hand, I couldn't help but feel a sense of satisfaction wash over me. Adam may have thought he could tear me down, but in the end, he only succeeded in making me stronger, 